your life. Hello, this is Jeremiah and Michaela Harrison with Liturgy of the Home. And we are making our, which, uh, how many videos have we made? <laughs> oh, this is like our 12th or something. We're making our video walking through the Pentecost calendar, this time without warning. I wasn't able to get uh, a warning out to everybody. So this is live, but you know, I don't know who's going to join us. We'll find out, be surprised, yes. But uh, this will be up after our live stream, but we're going to do more through of all the imagery of the Pentecost calendar, which uh, many of you, if you have calendars, you'll be putting up tomorrow. The first poster. The first poster of Pentecost. Right. There's going to be seven in <laughs> the series. A lot. Seven in the Pentecost and mm -hmm. the time after Pentecost. And you just have received the first four uh, for those of you who are subscribers to the Sophia physical subscription. And then the last three will come uh, in time to put up. And As long as I finish. <laughs> yes. Well, she's working on those right now. Yes. But... Uh, was there anything you wanted to? It's been. I feel like it's been a while since we got on. Well, it's been a whole four weeks <laughs> since the last one. So yes. Well, tomorrow is a very special day, and this I, honestly, these this set of calendars to me is very special because there's many new elements that you've incorporated in here that you didn't have before, and uh, I really just think of the calendars you made. This is one. This is the most beautiful. So one. it's not ordinary. Right. This is not just ordinary time. This is time after Pentecost. Now, we, we've been making that joke several times. <laughs> you know, because we know the new, in the new calendar, this is, you know, this after Pentecost or after the octave of Pentecost just begins, you know, just ordinary time for the rest of the year. But uh, in the traditional year, there is, it's rich, rich with so many saints' feast days. And there's some major saints' feast days. It's, it's kind of like there really is a rising and a falling throughout mm -hmm. Pentecost where you have some of the, the first class, the second class. You have like the Feast of the Apostles. You have you know, Michael Mass towards you know, mm -hmm. later on, you have uh, Martin Mass, and you have the, of course, you have the great feast of Corpus Christi and the precious blood. Mm -hmm. So there are several new things in, in these calendars that we, ha that um, we've not had before that we're excited to get to incorporate. Let's bring it on. Well, I guess we'll start to talk about it a little bit. Okay. And it uh, looks like we do have a few folks who are able to join us. Hi. So far, so I'm so glad to have you come. Sorry we uh, did this video without any uh, warning. Yes. But usually, this, usually the, well, for many of you probably know, the Saturday before a calendar goes up, we always try to put uh, put our um, our live stream out. So I guess let's go ahead and get started. Yes. So um, I think what we'll do is we'll walk through the whole calendar, mm -hmm. and then we'll go through and so show some of the source images. It seems like better, better than bouncing back. Right. And forth. Yeah. We we you know we've tried both ways, but I think after we we've, we've done the two Easter videos, it felt like it went smoother when we did it that way. So that's what we do. We and this time we actually have more sourced images. If you guys have been watching, you've probably remembered that the last two we didn't have a good record of our source images from Easter. Right. So now you can expect a lot more source images coming. Yes. Uh, so of course that'll make a longer video. But then again, you know, if you don't want to watch the whole thing, you could just watch the explainer and then. You know, mm -hmm. maybe watch the source images later or whatnot. So, so uh, introductions. This is the uh, time after Pentecost. Well, this is Pentecost and the time after Pentecost. And this is introducing a new material. This is uh, the first time we've had stained glass um, featured in the calendars. In the, in the architectural feature. Yeah. In the architectural part Just of the calendar. Here. So here we have the 12 fruits of the Holy Ghost. I did extensive re research on how to do this, um, how to choose which fruits to go with which fruit of the spirit and um, pulled a lot from medieval imagery. And um, we'll go over a little bit of that now, but it's also um, all written out in our um, insert companion guide. Um, if you uh, got them from Sophia, hopefully the inserts were in there. Right. Otherwise, if, if they weren't or if you don't have them, they're on our website. You should. Well, I'm actually, I'll be uploading them today. Okay. I don't have the inserts uploaded. I have the, I just got the companion guidebook, which has the excerpts from Dom Garanger. Okay. But yes, I will be getting the insert up. Uh, the one, you know, it's a smaller insert. It's only uh, eight pages total. And it kind of walks over the general structure of the calendar. Okay. Uh, whereas the companion guide goes more in depth as Dom Garanger's writings. So. Um, so in that, it explains a little more as to why the fruit is chosen with the particular. Um... Right. Goes to each fruit. Okay. Okay. Um, but before I launch into that, the overall color scheme for this calendar was taken from Saint-Chapelle in Paris. Um, it's beautiful, vibrant colors. I sort of wanted it to go, you know, from the darker wood in uh, 
in Lent, um, and then into like the brightness and white whiteness of Easter, and then now it's like bursting with colors. The birth of the church, it's sort of come into its fullness. So that's um, hopefully that's the impression y'all you all got when you looked at the calendar. So we have um, the Holy Ghost is there featured in sort of a rose window uh, style. Um, I have a picture of that in the source images, um, but that's sort of a, the stained glass look and then the Holy Ghost in the center. Um, you have the, the painted pillars, you have the fruits, oh, sorry, the, the gifts of the Holy Ghost there in Latin, kind of in the scroll work coming around. And then you have the actual scene of the first Pentecost there with Our Lady and the Apostles. Um, and you'll see one of my, the you'll, you'll notice something new is there's those little rings around the pillars. Those are um, octave markers. This is uh, the, one of the new things we were introducing with this time after Pentecost is a way to show what are called octaves. Now the octave, um, it comes from eight days. So basically, um, the octave was was the whole time period um, beginning with the feast and its octave went all eight days. So all the way to the following day, the next week. And that was sort of a extended time of being able to celebrate that feast. And not all octaves were were, were equal, are equal. Right. There's a hierarchy of octave. Now, in the in the traditional calendar of the 1962, actually many of the octaves were suppressed. And uh, but we, we decided to uh, go back just a tiny bit further. We uh, kept all the traditional octaves. So you'll notice from here on out, starting with this Pentecost calendar, and then including we'll be marking these next year when we get to Advent and when we do it all over again, expect different these different colors to indicate the octave. And in that insert, you should see it actually tells you the hierarchy. So you'll notice these colors for Pentecost, they have the little, the red, the red sort of gems in the middle, and they're they're taller and wider. Versus, and that is a for what is it? Here we, there we go. Um, sorry, they, they can't they can't see because it's they backwards. Can't see all it. the all the uh, letters okay. are backwards. Well, basically, as a quick introduction, privilege of the first order. That's right. Yeah. So you have privilege octaves; those are the highest. Then there are common octaves, and then there are simple octaves. And each of them, I developed a different shape, so you can tell which ones which. But within the privilege octaves, there are privilege octaves. That, privileged octaves of the first order, second order, and third order, and also sh uh, found a way to show that. So I've been wanting to do octaves the entire time I'm working on the calendar. I could not think of a way to show it without uh, creating like a an aval or a cascade avalanche wreck effect because octaves cross over each other. And as yeah. you will see in this, uh, I think it's starting mm -hmm. really in the next calendar, you see up to, I think most precious blood has three Here. different octaves kind of overlapping. Um, there's two, there's two, there's two octaves overlapping. Well, so it, one on top of the other. Right. So um, I was really excited when I discovered this, way. this um, styling on some pillars I came across when I was doing some research and I thought, Oh, I could use those to show octaves. So uh, we had a lot of fun with that, getting those on there. <laughs> As you look through, see if you can spot, spot the octave and spot, and see if you can remember just by looking at it, what, uh, what level in the hierarchy it is. Yes. So, so I'm great for the kids to sort of learn. Uh, some, some feasts, so just like the Gregorian chant, the feasts of the church, they, they rise, they have, you know, there's, there's an order within the feasts themselves. And so yeah. they're still arising and falling, even when it seems like there's so many saints feast days. Yes. So. so, all right. Um, I think that's all. We have the Veni Sancte Spiritus with the little stars in the background, mm -hmm. and that was also taken from um, San Chapelle, like up on the on the ceiling of the church of, should, the, of the crypt. I'll pop over. See, look here. Here's a beautiful image of San Chapelle. So you can kind of see where we got. We try to pull a lot of elements. Right. You really can see the blue and, and the red and the gold. Not fun. It's such a beautiful church. Would love to see it actually. Yes. But, so that's that's what we got. Um. So note on the stained glass, um, the little flowers that are kind of at the peaks of each of the sections. Though that's the Columbine flower, and that's a flower symbolizing the the Holy Ghost. This too. Yeah. So basically, yeah. it's the same flower. Oh. One's just rotated, and one's more just forward facing. But they're both. Um, Columbine. Oh. Uh, has to do with this the way there there's seven elements in the floor or there's seven mm. not seven petals it's seven something else and it 
Um, Corresponding yeah. to seven. And also, Columbuck, I think, comes from somehow the Latin for dove or something like that, too. Okay, right. Yeah. Now, I also want to say quickly, too, you'll notice that the gifts of the Holy Ghost are in Latin, which I really, uh, I think we, we both collaborated on this, didn't we? We did, we did. But I love this because you notice the gifts are in Latin, but the fruits are in the vernacular. And as our calendars, you know, if they get translated to other languages, these will change, but these will remain the same. And I think that that's a kind of symbol for the universality of the gifts of God. One God, one church, one set of gifts, but yet when they take root in our souls, the very different fruits from different cultures and peoples all over the world, but still in that same. That's right. That's a little, I really like that. Shall we go over the fruits briefly or should we just let people? Yeah, I'll, I'll just make a few comments. Um, it is in the insert more specifically, but I'll just make some some notes as we're going through since some people may only watch the video. So um, we'll start with charity, um, the strawberry. Uh, it's not, that one was more, I knew children would see the heart shape and the red and think of God's love and the love we should have for each other. So strawberry was pretty easy. Um, pear for joy. Um, that's more pulling from the medieval and, um, you'll see sometimes a pear tree in the background of some, uh, in, in paintings. Part uh, partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, for, exactly. For, uh, Lord. Um, and his, it's, uh, representing his love for us and his love for us is the source of our joy. So that's why that's there. Olives are for peace. That's, um, all the way back to Noah, with the olive branch, uh, right, you know, symbolizing that, you know, the, the, the flood had, had ceased and, you know, peace was, was returning to the earth, uh, peach for patience. Um, I, I read that in medieval symbology, it's, um, linked with, um, with silence, which the, uh, the silence of virtue, um, and being able to endure. That's right. Cause you were to talk about the difference between patience and then longanimity. Longanimity, so that people get a little confused mm -hmm. <laughs> between those two. But right. patience is the ability to bear suffering, to bear under evil quietly and peacefully. Right. All right, and then orange, um, for benignity, benignity, benignity. <laughs> Uh, the orange tree with its white flowers suggests purity, chastity, and generosity. These lend well to the choosing of this fruit, for it is good and gentle and set against the vice of malignity and malevolence. Yeah. Now, I think most of our folks are going to have that answer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so going to have that. So, well, I don't know if you wanted to note a few things that stood out to you about choosing the fruit. Sure. So, um, the gourds. Those are kind of fun. Um, those are sort of linked with, um, like Saint Saint James has it. Pil pilgrims would would take the gourds and haul them out and use them to carry water. And so I don't know if that's mentioned in here specifically. Oh, yeah, you do have it. Okay, yeah, good. A good thing could carry clean potable water. Yes. For on a journey. Um, um, I guess since we mentioned patience, I'll mention longanimity. Okay. Patience is the ability, or is the virtue of being able to bear up under evil, to bear up suffering well. Longanimity is the ability to wait for the good. Okay. So if you uh, are impatient at a stoplight, it's not so much you lack patience, you, you lack longanimity. The, the light will turn green. It's a good thing. You're just having a hard time waiting for it. <laughs> um, should, we, should we go through the fruits, or do you want to? I, well, if we have any questions, I think we should probably maybe make a few notes. But like I said, everyone's got the same answer. So all the things that you're reading, they okay. should all well have. And if you, if you have any questions, you could ask on this or after watching this, shoot me an email. I'm happy to answer or to send you references. So um, um, one little note, uh, if you're trying to help your kids to enter more into this season, um, it might be fun to maybe on different days if you're able to incorporate some of these different uh, fruits and nuts or whatever into your uh, into your lunch or and you know to meals. Um, sometimes that could be kind of fun for kids. Obviously, some of the more um, uh, not so usual ones might be a little bit harder, but um, uh, we're kind of uh, we're we're playing around with it and seeing what we can incorporate and if if we can come up with enough to share. That what worked and what didn't, we'll we'll do that. <laughs> we'll let you know what next year after we test it all out. Yeah, maybe. <laughs>
<laughs> Shall we go through? Sure. Can you go through the days? These are okay. the all the days within the octave of Easter, and then you want to talk about uh, all the these imagery. all the, So this is the octave of Pentecost. It's all first class. So if you notice, all the words are at the top because this there it's every it's, day. It, yes, this is a big it's just deal. a continuation of Pentecost. Um, this is also the Ember days. So Ember yeah, Wednesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, there's no saints feast days here because the, the, um, the day takes, takes precedent. Um, Just like an Easter. Um, so these are all the gospel readings. Um, and this is re most of these images I did from last year. Um, so they've been touched up, put in place here. Um, for those of you that were with us last year, you'll notice a lot of it's the same, but a lot of it's different also from, from last year. Um, okay, let's go down to the next week. Um, let's talk a little bit about this week. This week's pretty important. So the P Pentecost is the birth of the church and the church feeds us with the seven sacraments coming obviously from Christ. Um, the seven waters, uh, represent the seven sacraments. Um, so on Sunday, you have an image from the gospel and it's of Peter baptizing. And so we had that there. And then on Thursday, nice we baptism. had the image of of the the Eucharist. Um, Corpus Christi. So those are two sacraments represented there. And then for the remaining sacraments, we went ahead and put those up in the mantle um, close to the, the font that is that it represents. And so uh, that's sort of neat having... Pentecost at the top, and then this is like the next week's like the overflowing of the seven sacraments um, into the remaining part of the year. Um, uh, let's see, <laughs> there's so much to cover. It's like which thing to talk about. Um, you'll notice we we're continuing with the theme of putting uh, saints that would have been on that day that have been um, superseded there in the columns, kind of watching what's going on in liturgy along with us. Um, so that's why that saint is there. Uh, we have St. Anthony of Padua. He's new this year. St. Basil the Great. We'll walk through. This is the <clears throat> these sacraments. This one is confession. Correct? That's confession, yes. And this is uh, confirmation. Yes, for the shield. For the shield. Yep. Marriage. Yes. Of course, the, blood, the body and blood are um, the Eucharist. Yep. Then we have... Ex holy order. This is holy order. That's right. Holy order to the priesthood. And then finally, extreme unction. Uh, anointing of the sick. And that's uh, the, the hourglass with the wings to kind of show time has run up and and the time has come to take flight to the next the next world. Mm. Um, so uh, the image we have for Corpus Christi, that is uh, the monstrance of Lanciano, where was it? A, one of the, probably the most famous Eucharistic miracle. And so um, I thought it fitting to use that here. Um, let's see. And then there's St. Gregory Barbarigo, St. Ephraim. Uh, I think both of those are new too from last year. Right. Um, I mean, they're, they're new well, this year. Well, and some of you may have remembered uh, we had some coloring pages that Rose had put together for those saints. Yes. We were in this transition period where we were uh, illustrating Advent, which is what released this year. But um, so, but anyway. The, the the imagery goes by layers, as you'll see. I mean, the first year is the most everything's kind of coming all at once, but every year after this, you'll see small layers of changes as as we refine year by year. Oh, I should I should make note. So the the foreground flower uh, for this this whole um, time is um, this right. this is a red columbine flower. So this is the same flowers up in the top, um, but it's. Uh, it's red for the Holy Ghost. And then but what we're doing is for the whole time after Pentecost, every first class feast will see the change of the foreground uh, scenery. So as soon as we get to, uh, I believe it's John the Baptist, it changes again. So the foregrounds are That's changing right. between all first class feasts, unless they're like super close together. Then we, we came up with another way. You mean, you mean uh, so well, first, before so we, go, that, we, we that, have a quick question here. Uh, from somebody yes. that I wanted to get before it goes too yes. far. Wasn't there a frame two? I couldn't order with calendar. Couldn't find on Sophia Press. So the Sophia did. Uh, I don't know if they. I mean, maybe it just keeps going out of stock. But they had a set of uh, magnetic poster hangers 
They had it on their site. If you can't find it now, that may mean maybe they ran out of stock and couldn't get any. But what they are is magnetic poster hangers. You can um, go online, you can go Amazon or any other online place and just search for magnetic poster hangers. Get them at least 18 inches long. Mm -hmm. They're very simple. They're just two halves that snap together on the top and the bottom. So Magnets. It, yeah, magnets. And it makes it easy to change out each of the posters. And if you uh, really want to have fun with it, you can get... Uh, get two posters, you know, like we did for Easter and Lent and tape them together in the middle and have one long sort of a, now, of course you can't, you know, do that. You can't have all of Pentecost all together because that's seven. That would be, that would be real long. But no, you'd have to like yeah. go across or something. Yeah. Um, so just to, just to clarify the foregrounds change between all the first class fees, but the backgrounds are changing by poster. So as you're putting up the posters progressively, the sky and the background is going to get darker the, and darker. You mean the plants, the here, plants in the here. foreground? Yes. So the flower is basically changing with each of the first class oh, fees. And I choose a flower that goes with that first class fee. So it's almost like that first class feast is ushering in a new scene or a new, um, uh, yeah, I guess a new scene. Um, so it kind of breaks up time after Pentecost. And also the pillars change too. And the pillars change. So, so the, the columns, design, yes. you see the columns actually design here. Yeah. Will make will stay all the way through until there's another major. I guess right here I, at uh, Corpus Christi because I see the columns different. Yes, exactly. Right, so Corpus Christi had a new column. Yep. And then we had we haven't gotten to see there. Well, here's the new flower. Right yep. after Corpus Christi. What flower is this? This is called Bleeding Hearts, and it's for um, <clears throat> uh, it's it symbolizes Christ's heart. And I just thought it'd be perfect with being the month for dedicated to um, the Sacred Heart. Right. We actually are gonna Sacred Heart is another first class feast. So I went and also chose um, red roses for the whole month of 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 um, for for the whole time, time after, after Sacred Heart. <laughs> Um, so both of them are really fitting. Well, of course, you know, so we're in June, which is a month dedicated to the Sacred Heart. Yes. And we'll, we'll make a separate, really short little video going over the monthly dedication image that she finished. Yes. But uh, just want to touch. That's what June is really about. I think we all have seen in our society, they're trying to push something a little different. Yeah. But uh, June is not about that. June is about remembering and, and increasing our devotion to the Sacred Heart of our Lord. Um, also, if you notice this year, we're, I'm very excited the whole time after Pentecost, uh, the mantles will be primarily in, um, it with have like an enamel look on um, it's like an inlay. And I really like this. Um, it's a beautiful art form that we're pulling from and, and, uh, representing here. Um, I don't think I have any examples to show you of actual enamel. Maybe you could pull up some. Oh, thank you, Ben. <laughs> thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. So anyway, I'm excited about this. You'll you'll be seeing enamel used a lot in this time after Pentecost. We should uh, we should have had a picture. I know we've showed it before of the uh, the reliquary of the three kings. Oh, that's full right. of enamel work. That's true. I don't true. know if I could find it while you're talking. I might be able to, but okay. but it's, it's it's this kind of enamel paint that's usually on a metal like gold or silver. And uh, it'd be a kind of paint. And so this, mm -hmm. this, you know, all this is made, this is made with digital tools, but the effect that, that uh, you're going for is, is kind of like an enamel because all the frame is meant to be like it's, a, it's gold, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So. Uh, um, okay. So here, the next Sunday, um, this is the, speaking oh. of, of the banquet, the heavenly banquet. Um, so you see there all the, the poor and. Uh, coming, coming to be fed, and then down below are the three person or three persons that each did not come to the banquet that chose instead to go to their farm or to go, you know, plow their field or you know the other one said I have a wife so I can't come, so that's what those three images are down there, and you have Saint Juliana Falconeri there in the in the the pillar there looking on, and then this is also a new thing we're doing for time after Pentecost is the little. Um, figure or scene up in the upper left corner by by the date square that is taken from of what what's going on with the liturgy the hours the divine office um what's being read in the patterns reading specifically because there isn't 
uh, there is a, a close connection between the theme of the week and then what is being read by the church in her matins readings that week. So in the in the insert, I actually talk and I show just what chapters and what books. So you see, understand the monks, they gather seven times a day to pray at one time in the night. Matins is that night reading. And usually there's readings from the Old Testament that are done in matins that correspond and connect with the liturgical year. And so in our calendars, we are, we're signaling, you know, a bit of what is being read. And you'll even see some of the days during the week and future parts where there's an image that may be taken from that. But if you want, you can actually, from the insert, you can read along at times if, if you have time and, and to see how, how they're coming together. And really, honestly, if you really want a, a good primer on it, the probably you can't read it because it's all reversed, but the St. Andrew Daily Missal. Uh, by Dom Gaspar Lefebvre, his commentaries usually always tie together what's going on in Matins with what's going on in the liturgy. And they're really beautiful, and it's a, it's a major, it's a main source for for the art and really for our our devotion life. So I can I highly recommend that missile. So this whole time between Corpus Christi and the Feast of Sacred Heart is is a this octave is full of of adoring our Lord in the most blessed sacrament. And a lot of times churches will do the Corpus Christi procession on that Sunday. Um, and so that's why I have in the mantle there, the, that scene of a procession kind of progressing over towards the feast of the sacred heart. Um, yep. There it is. Which is just after the octave. Yes. Right? So um, it sort of ties the, these two beautiful feasts together. Um and then this year special because the the nativity of John the Baptist is immediately following Sacred Heart. That that doesn't happen. That that that's unique to this year to have these these two days right there. Usually there's like a vigil, I believe, of John the Baptist. But this year it's Sacred right. Heart is there. Um, so the images for the Feria days were just sort of reinforcing um, this idea of love for our Lord and the Blessed Sacrament an image of of the christ child there um oh hidden deity prisoner of love it's like christ in the tabernacle um uh kind of opening the door and you know <laughs> looking at us and wanting to be with us and then the other image of of the young boy at altar server receiving holy communion behold my heart which is so loved men um i just thought the children would connect with these two pictures um so anyway I think we've, we've touched on the major. Now, to, to get more about the saints, I urge you to uh, talk to your pastor, look them up. Also, on our companion guide that we put out, I will always have, I typically always have two pages from Dom Guernsey on each saint. So, the companion guides are available for free at our website, but they're also in the members area for those who are members. You can print it out. There'll be a lot of paper because they're. Basically, you know, it's at least two pages per day, every day, and many days, especially like you'll notice the uh, the days of Pentecost, his commentaries are more lengthy. I, I couldn't get it less than, say, four, you know, four pages yeah. per day for each. But Pentecost is really just, there's just so much, so much meaning here. So, I, you know, it's a great way you could uh, read them, read them like on a tablet or whatnot. But even if you don't read them all, if you just get them just certain saints that you're really interested in, want to know more about, um, the companion guide is a great way to to find out more about these saints. Little note on the nativity of John the Baptist. Um, I did a lot of I came across a lot of images for this, and um, I have pictured here our Blessed Mother holding John the Baptist because um, presumably she would have been there at the birth because um, she went to go visit Elizabeth. Um, so I kind of put that there. And um, you have um, Zachariah there, and he's writing the name John because he was deaf. Or sorry, he was he was mute because he wouldn't believe the angel um, telling him that that his wife would 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 bear a child. So um, it's funny because in a lot of medieval imagery, all they show the 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 wet nurses having John the Baptist, and I was like. I don't know that we don't, we don't do that. We don't think about that sort of thing. It's, and at the time that was more like during the medieval era, they would use the wet nurses. So I had to sort of try to find um, an image and I was happy with how this, this one turned out. I thought it was good. Um, so should we go over There's so much more here? And my brain's like 
There's so much. Um, should we go over some of the source images then? I think so. Okay. Sure. Was there okay. anything in, in the image of Trinity Sunday that you wanted to note? Um, it's a scene of baptism. Yes. Um, I think it's all there. I think it's all Very there. Very clear. Like there's just, I don't know. There's, there's just so much going on. It's a beautiful season. I, I'm sorry if I seem a little spaced out. It's just because my head's been in November and I'm working on the month of all souls. And <laughs> so having a little bit of liturgical, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, it yo yo ring. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, it's a beautiful season. Let's go look at, um, at some of the source images. So you already saw this one. Saint Chapelle is gorgeous. I've been there. Um, it's just too bad that it's more of like a museum. People just walk in there and just look at all the beautiful art. It's like this was meant to be a place where the mass was said in great solemnity. And um, here's a question we got. Mm -hmm. I like this. Have y'all considered putting together the Sundays and solemnities images together as a book for kids? Kind of like a board book kind of thing. Just have like all the best pictures all together. <laughs> we do have uh, all of the Sundays and the Saints feast days as coloring pages. So you right now you you can if you join our little digital membership you can basically download as PDFs uh, these black and white line drawings of all the all of the Sundays all of the major feast days and all of the saints days of the year, kind of broken down by season and she's releasing them as we're. But I I mean we would A love to book. find different ways to use this imagery that that you know kids and people could yeah yeah so no, i'm guessing you're, 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 you're thinking of something that the kids can't destroy that they could bring to church with them right well, <laughs> and keep them quiet something they could look at well, that's not a bad idea well, maybe we'll we'll put that in the put that in the idea the idea bin of what we can do with these images and that's just beautiful it's almost depressing banking these calendars sometimes because the art i'm looking at is so much better than what i produce i mean this stuff's just gorgeous they don't yeah. even make it like this anymore no no yeah. It's like, oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. You're, you're, I mean, our, this little project that she's doing, it's like, a, it's just a little homage to these. Yeah, very little. To these, to these things. I mean, so here is. These are just, just more details that I pulled from. from. Mm -hmm. You can see here, you see the different. This is like the arches of your stained glass windows. You yeah. I have some there. sketches that are later in the source images that I pulled from. Okay, so this is where I got the, the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost image. Yeah. This is the center. This is where I got the center mm -hmm. of the rose window. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you have it? Do you have the? Yep. This is just a beautiful image. I didn't exactly use anything in this composition, but it was just it was just pretty. Had to grab it. I'm a glut for beautiful images. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is, is how I stole the scroll right. work here. I thought that was well done. Many of you have probably seen these images. Right. Some of these are Pretty well known in missiles. Yeah. Uh, this one's a little more medieval, a little more simplistic, uh, which I kind of like, um, but it didn't exactly fit with what I was doing. So, but I pulled it here. It's a beautiful image. I know. Is. Here's another. Is this? This is more of an engraving. This style. looks like door. Is it looks story? Like, I don't know if it's him or not, but it's very similar style. It probably is him. It looks awesome. Yeah, you're bad. Thank you. Right. Isn't that beautiful, though? But Tons see, you, you have Our Lady there and then all the apostles. The 72. The, so <clears throat> after the ascension, well, so the 72 uh, uh, disciples went with our Lord, saw him ascend into heaven, processed back into Jerusalem and then went to the cynical and waited there waited. for the nine days till the till the coming of the Holy Ghost. And those were the 72. And I learned that that's also part of the reason why traditionally, uh, or at least for a long time, it was the traditional standard to have 72 cardinals was for those 72. Oh, wow. For the 72 first. The numbers changed, obviously. Right. Right. Well, I mean, the church <laughs> is a lot more a recent times. But um, anyway, that, I thought that was an interesting piece of history there. We had another comment. You could expand the holy cards. And we think we have thought of that, right? We're, we have, yes. We've um, definitely talked about that. And cards, people have asked about cards, like for like confirmations or for um, if a priest, you know, for ordinations. And, I mean, I think we're interested in doing that somehow in a way where we could... Uh, how could you print like print on demand? Because basically, what Michaela's building is this library of saints imagery mm -hmm. for the whole year. So, 
I think things like that will be coming in time. I mean, the whole goal with this thing that we're doing with Liturgy of the Home is just to produce, to make beautiful things that families can use in their home life, in their prayer life, in their devotional life, and to teach their children mm-hmm. and to, uh, to deepen the faith. So this year has been so busy yes. with just making the art. We haven't capitalized on anything. It's like, just get the files, the publisher in time. I don't know if you realize but just how much work it takes for her to draw. These. It's about four images a day in order to meet our deadlines. Is four, kind four of daily. And she's doing black and white. And then her sister is coming and doing watercolor for it all. And then her other sister is digitally arranging everything such that it can be moved each year. And it's all in layers. It's, it's a huge work. They're, 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 she's basically working every moment that you can or nursing the baby. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, and sometimes doing both. Well, yeah. Yeah. We only have about another month until the, the hardest part is, is finished. And then it'll still be new art every year because we have to adjust things, but I want to do as much in future. So it'll be a lot, a lot easier. So anyway, thank you for the suggestions guys. I really appreciate helping us think of what we could do with it. That's a beautiful image. This is um, confirmation, I would assume. Uh, I just I just came across this and I was like, oh wow. So I want to save this. It'd be a great picture for like the front of a of a of a card for like someone getting confirmed. That'd be beautiful. Mm-hmm. So anyway, I grabbed that. This is a mosaic. Um, I I used this one on the Sunday before Pentecost to show like the oh. Holy Ghost was getting ready to come down. That's right. And then okay. on the Feria day, the Holy Ghost is coming down. Um, that was, okay. And then today's the vigil. And then tomorrow the Holy Ghost is. Right. Oh, and I, I want to note you today's the last day of the novena. Right? Yes. The very first novena, the novena of the Holy Ghost in today. Yes. Tomorrow being Pentecost. And then here's, this is on vestments. Yes. Isn't that beautiful? Look at the, the embroidery work. Hopefully more people will learn how to do these different art styles, you know, bring back mosaics, exactly. bring back exactly. embroidery and do it with these beautiful. I mean, part of what I love is, is understanding the symbolism and then the symbolism is congruent throughout all the different art styles and in different places. And so hopefully children from young age are using these calendars can start to develop that library of being able to recognize things based on their symbols. And then those, if they grow up and they become artisans and they're making vestments, doing carving, uh, doing oil painting, they can keep, you know, keep that, that language alive. And here, so. here's the rose window. So you notice on the, the image of the Holy Ghost, how she brought two images together. You see earlier we showed you the Holy, and then here's the rose window. Yeah. Here, here's the, the, is this a model of the rose window? At- this is not Saint Chapelle. This is Notre Dame, Notre Dame. or, no. or no, no, this one I think is, um, Chart. And there, there's other images. This is numbered. This is coming from some reference that has exactly. So th- there's like images in each one of these, right? Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, we McKay was just taking the overall structure and pattern yeah. to sort of, which I think it came out really beautifully. Yes. Thank you. Terry did a lot of touch up on it digitally to help make it look like it was more glowing. Right. Here's an example of a rose window for anyone who doesn't know what that is. This is from the outside of the building, and if you're on the inside, it's all like beautiful. It's like a it's a beautiful stained glass work of art so that's uh, Notre Dame back before it got burned yeah. <laughs> the jewel the the crown of France here's some of the architectural work that you that you mentioned yep so I use that for the arch for the um ember days this type arch right here yeah that for little, the ember days yeah that little inset the there days. Right. so we've got to build churches like this again they are in, in different places. Mm-hmm. They really are. And so here, here's the top. This is where you got the design for the tops of yeah. the stained glass windows. Yep. For here. Yep. Right, as you can see the arch of the Ember Days, like in the previous picture, we just that we just looked at. Yep. So. All right. Now, oh, we, you didn't mention this. We did. We need to mention it. Is uh, what 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 is with this scene, down here? So this is Moses right. receiving the Ten Commandments. This prefigures, this is the old law, the, the, the Jewish people receiving the old law um, by Moses, but the coming of the Holy Ghost at Pentecost is receiving the right. new law and the church is born. So um, we show I juxtapose that the, figure, the two. Right? The Pentecost is the fulfillment of this, of this first thing, and then this source image shows where... Now she got the composition yep. for Moses receiving from God. Mm-hmm. So 
And then this, you take this is where you got elements for your composition, yep. right? For the Pentecost scene itself. Yep. You are lady there. Um, I changed the composition around a little bit to make it fit. Uh, this is a beautiful, I believe it's, pretty sure it's a mosaic in this church. I would love to go see it in person, but um, this was the, the main source image for the inspiration for that Sunday for tomorrow. And then finally, oh, let's see. I use this this uh, composition for the upper corners on either side of the Holy Ghost because the Father and the uh, the Holy Ghost proceeds from the Father and the Son, so that's why they're up in the corner there. Okay, so the reason why this is here, this is um, St. Teresa of Avila, but uh, this image is here because I was using oh, it to study the yeah. rays of light. So see, I, I needed, um, I needed a, a, a way to show the light rays uh, being more structural. And so that's kind of how I use this. I hear St. Teresa of Avila here. Yeah. Right. Being wounded by the arrow of love. From the angel. Yes. Um, so here is an image of Our Lady and the Christ Child with the apple. Mm. And uh, in the calendar, the apple is associated with uh, the virtue of faith. All right. How interesting. Because, I, I mean, consider that many times that first fruit that our parents took. So you have Adam holding the apple. That symbolizes one thing. And if you have the Christ. apple in Christ's hand, it symbolizes something very different. <laughs> so anyway, I wanted to show that picture. All right. Now, far better to, to receive that apple from the hand of our Lord than to take grasp of it of ourselves. Yes. Here is Jonah with the go under the is gourd. Is that the gourd? Yeah. Okay. So just, just to show the shape of it a little bit, this is an old stained glass window. These are some of the um, designs for the fruits. Yes. Oh, and I actually missed someone. I missed Ben. For anyone who wanted to know how to get to the shop, I think he's talking about our shop. Well, there's two places you can get. You, of course, can go to Sophia to get the calendars. Our own little web shop where we have digital mm -hmm. um, digital files that you could download or print yourself for our coloring pages for the monthly dedication image, which we'll make another video for that in just a minute. Um, and for... Yeah. Oh, well, actually, we have a few music PDFs. So we have some folks that have helped us or helped us pull together a small collection of songs. We have piano music that you can actually play some of these old songs and learn them. But also, each of the monthly dedications comes with a hymn, a Latin chant hymn, but yet the words are translated to poetic English. So it's, it's a neat little project. What we're trying to do is to, with the monthly dedication, all that is at our website, liturgyofthehome.com. And some of these things are in our web store. Most all this content is available in our membership. If you want, you could just sign up for one month. Um, I believe for folks who are getting Sophia, it's just five dollars and thirty-five cents. Uh, ordinarily, it's just eight fifty. But if you want, just sign up for a month, download, and, and see if if you find it useful. You can keep going. Otherwise, you can cancel. Um, but that's how we that's what we have available right now at our shop. So. Now, okay. this, this is one of my favorites. Yeah, I jumped back. So this was the image I used on uh, on Tuesday, uh, Pentecost Easter, Tuesday. Pentecost Tuesday, that's right. So that's the sheep being led through the through the narrow gate, and the shepherd is the the gatekeeper. Mm -hmm. And the scripture says, oh, our Lord says, I am the gate. Mm -hmm. um, this is the composition, I believe, for That Wednesday? When Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Okay. Yes. Remember Wednesday. Right? Yeah. I realized. Yeah. I pulled it. I pulled that as as my source image there. Um, and I realized if any kids are being super technical, they'll be like, "Mom, that looks like the new mass." <laughs> and I was like, oh. "Oh, that's true." But it's not meant to be specifically like mass. But, well, but I realized is... kids might think that. But it's more to show Christ. But because the tables in between. It's... Right. But this. I mean, this thing is an image more of like the Last Supper. Right. Exactly. So right. anyway. I just thought, I wonder if little kids, sometimes kids, you know, we as adults put things in it. it we, we understand what it means. And kids can sometimes be like, wait a minute. Well, here they have the image here too of the modern day of sort of the, this is the no, meaning no, behind it. And right. Then, and right. But what? that's, that, that's more of the traditional altar there. So right. anyway. Right. 
And then this here, you see the composition for this particular day here, Thursday. Right. right. In the octave. I, from this one. I added the light just to kind of emphasize that the healing power. And this was, was Peter. Through. This is Peter. Peter, Peter yes. healing. Healing the man. Yep. This is the illustration of the gospel that day. Mm -hmm. And then here's the illustration of uh, the composition you got for. The man being lowered down through the ceiling. Of palsy. Yep. And then I got. Beautiful. They're such different art styles. Right, right. But yeah, I, lo I love how you bring them together. This one is, is a good one. It's a classic picture of Christ with the mother and the yeah. child. Here, right here. Yep. So as you go through Pentecost and, and you, if you get to go to Mass uh, each day, or even if you don't, take a look at the readings and you could see. From, from the gospel readings, where the images come from for each of these days. This is here is a very here is the the monstrance of Luciano, Italy. Mm -hmm. The 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 little. Um, now I think well, I'm sure probably most of you folks know the story, but if you know, you gotta look it up. But this is one of the most famous miracles where the body and blood of our Lord actually turned to flesh and blood on the altar. It was a priest who was doubting, doubting if it was this was really true. And at the words of consecration, uh, you have to look up the story. But he was shocked to find, and he, he believed. And so the that you know, it's still there. The, the flesh was kept, and in that glass is it's all the dried flesh. Now, what's really interesting is they the actually blood, the blood's were, in the, the blood is coagulated. Mm -hmm. um, and what's very interesting is they've actually a, few, a scientist or something is actually able to take a tiny sample and they found that it is indeed human blood and not only that but that it has pro when they analyzed it it has properties that only living blood has even though they took it from that that's hundreds of years old so i mean the, the blood is still alive according to what the scientists well, is, it. Is, no, isn't no. it true too that all the different eucharistic miracles when they examine it it's all the exact all same, the same dna same dna same blood type all, crazy? and the tissue is always the tissue of the heart myocardial tissue yeah so if somebody says so, oh i don't know all that stuff's superstitious you know it's like well, well look at there the are these there are these silent miracles that stand to this day being ignored by the whole world yeah. but there they are yeah and this uh, the birth of john the baptist yes right? yes i i almost used this one but the composition didn't lend itself to being vertical right. so um but this was one of my favorite ones i love i love this picture that's so sweet. Imagine the joy after all those years of not being able to have a child and then to hold a baby, hold a baby, your own baby in your arms. Like it's very special. Another. So this is this is here. where I, I pulled yeah. this Composition for, for Mary. For yours. And for uh Zachar Zachariah or Zachary. But not for Elizabeth. Mm. Elizabeth, I think pulled from another picture. So as you can see. This is another one. I didn't really use particularly any elements, but there's little baby John the Baptist being held by somebody else. And then there's Zachariah writing his name. And then Elizabeth is in the bed. I don't know why. I never see Our Lady in any of the art, but I believe it's tradition that she's there. So I thought this one last year was Our Lady. I thought that was a halo, but then as it turned out, the right. fan being held by someone else was like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because here are the halos. Doesn't that look like a halo though? Like yeah, but here are the halos. Look. There's yeah, halo. I know. There's him. So, anyway. so I think that brings us to the end. Very good. Very good. 48 minutes. <laughs> that is a uh, walkthrough of part one. Well, like I said, if you for thank you guys for being with us. And for those of you who come later, if you have any questions, please just shoot me an email. Or leave a comment at the YouTube, whatnot. I'll answer, and uh, we'll we're going to put a, we'll work on a little video for going over the monthly dedication. Monthly dedication that'll, that'll be fairly short, but I want to make sure that everybody who who follows us knows about those as well. We've been going on, uh, we've been doing that for quite a while. So yeah. you only have three more left, I think, right? Because yeah, three left. Because you, the way you started partway through last year. Mm -hmm. So keep me in your prayers as I'm working on the final pieces. I have a big end of the year 
uh, spread that is going to be quite glorious, but I'm trying to wrap my head around it. So coming to the end, a little bit of burnout, but I'm going to make it just over the finish line. <laughs> so thank all right. you all for your thank support. You and prayers. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. And so uh, don't forget to give, if you're on YouTube, give us a like it really helps uh, and subscribe, help our channel grow. Tell your friends and family. Um, we just, we want to make these calendars so that way they can help Catholics everywhere. Remember where we are and where we're going in the sacred time of the church. So God bless you all. And until we see you next time.